voice, apologies, bronchitis, getting better. I've been asked a few times recently to paint another crow and because Halloween is this month, I thought it's a perfect opportunity. In this video, I'll share a few of the techniques I use to paint this crow in watercolour. I think it's a crow. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think ravens are bigger than this bird. With this painting I mixed black because pre-mixed black straight out of the tube can be flat and dead looking but I did cheat a little and I used some lamp black in the darkest areas. So I'll show you how I mixed my black and what I did with it and how I combined it with lamp black. Painting all black subjects like painting all white subjects can be a little daunting. I use the same approach that I use when I paint white subjects. I choose my reference photo carefully and I look hard for other colours that I can use to enhance my subject. With the reference photo I used for this painting, it was easy to see other colours. This was taken by Pete Niche and I downloaded it from Unsplash. And I can see blue and violet in those feathers. So I was able to use a combination of blue violet and black to make my crow look interesting. I used Fabriano Artistico soft press paper which is a beautiful paper that I've only recently started using. It's got a slight tooth. It's more textured than hot press paper but it's smoother than cold press and it's a really lovely surface to paint on. I used a limited palette of four Winsor & Newton colours. French Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna, Winsor Violet and because I couldn't help myself a small amount of lamp black. The full length tutorial of this painting has been posted on my Patreon site just in time for Halloween. So join us there if you want to learn more about painting in watercolour. I put a link in the description. Okay, I said I mixed some black. This is my black palette. I usually use French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna to mix black. And I like to get freshly squeezed paint out so that I don't have to wet my brush too much to mix it. So I use a slightly damp brush to mix the two colours together and that gives me really dark pigment. If I don't have to use any water to pick the paint up, that keeps the paint really dark. Now as I mentioned, I used this mixed black but I also used a small amount of lamp black as well. I've transferred my line drawing onto the watercolour paper. I've masked off the gate that overlaps the crow's body with some masking fluid. And now I'm wetting the crow's head with some water. I want to work on wet paper. I wet the body as well. I won't be painting the wing at this stage. I pick up some of the black that I mixed and I paint that onto the wet paper. I don't want to go too dark just yet. I just need a light coverage of black over the top and then I will darken it in places. Paint carefully around the eye and I drag it down to the back. I'm not going to be painting the back or the wing in just yet. I just want to focus on the head and the body. So where the paint finishes there, I make sure I have a soft edge that I can join up with later. I don't want a hard edge there. So I use my brush to soften the paint there. I got a smaller brush then to take the paint in closer to the beak. This is a number five. I was using a number seven. Take it up close to the eye as well.
and then I take the black all the way down the body to this group of feathers here. That's still wet, so I'm taking the opportunity to drop in some French ultramarine there at the top of the head. And this colour here is Windsor Violet. I drop that in for interest. It's a bit dry on the back, just here, so I'll drop it down here where it's wet. That looks quite dark while it's wet, but it will dry quite a bit lighter and I'll need to layer some darker colour over the top. I waited until it was dry and then I started to paint the wing in. I can join up with that area on the back where I softened the edge before by wetting the paper over the top of the painted area. And then I use my black mixture again. This feather here at the back I'm going to paint in Windsor Violet. And I'll put some Windsor Violet here on the wing as well for interest. And also some French Ultramarine. This first wash of paint will be seen in the lightest areas of the Raven. You'll see me shortly painting over the darkest areas with some lamp black. Here I've got my black mixture again and I'm painting in the tail and the flight feathers with it. I have a definite wing edge here along the front of the wing because I painted in the body first, then I dried it and I painted in the wing separately. I painted in the tail, the beak and the eye. Now I'm going to darken the feathers on the head. To do that, I wet the paper with water. The wet paper will keep the paint edges soft for me. I'm going to be painting some lamp black on this area. And the previous layer is completely dry. I dried it with the hairdryer to make sure. Okay, while that's wet, I get some lamp black. This is my little lamp black palette. When I pick it up, I pick up really dark, sticky, thick pigment and I paint this onto the darkest areas that I see. So that water in the paper, as I said, will keep those paint edges soft and all I have to do is paint it on where I see it's a bit darker on my reference photo. And you can see that it's darker in front of the beak, above the eye and below the eye as well. It's also below the beak there, you can see it's quite a bit darker. I could have used the black I mixed myself for this, but I wanted it super dark and I was a bit lazy the day that I painted this. So I thought I'm going to have a lot of my black mixture showing and I only need a bit of darker black here and there. So I just felt it was easier for me to use the lamp black in those darkest areas. Here I've just wet underneath the beak and I've got lamp black again got my little zero brush and I'm painting that on there on those darker areas. To get it quite dark I wipe my brush over the pigment that's been squirted out on the little plate. It's gone hard now so if I wipe my wet brush over the top I get pure pigment. I paint a few little flicks off the edge. You can see why I've used Windsor Violet and French Ultramarine because you can see those colours on the reference photo. The feathers aren't completely black, you can see that beautiful sheen on them. Okay, so now I've got those black areas in that I can see, those really dark areas. I've just wet the right hand side of the bird. Now I've got some more lamp black and I'm darkening that edge. The paint's bleeding over the wet paper. I don't want to completely lose the violet and the ultramarine that you can see. I just want the black to enhance it. 
Then I got my brush and I pulled or flicked some of that black paint into the dry area to create some little feather separations there. With these wing feathers up the top here, all I did was get a little bit of lamp black on my brush and I painted over my pencil line on the dry paper. On the larger feathers, I worked on wet paper, so that's a bit of water going on that one now. I've got some lamp black here on my little zero brush, and I paint that along the pencil line where the two feathers meet one another. The paint bleeds over the water, and then I take the paint out of my brush, and I use it just slightly damp to feather that paint out a bit more. And then I do the same thing with this one. I wet the feather and then I use the little brush with some lamp black and I run it along the pencil line where the two feathers meet. That gives me a little shadow along there and it separates the feathers from one another. With this feather here, I'll wet it and I'll run the paint along underneath those feathers that I just painted along here and that'll give me a shadow underneath them it's only a small amount of paint I've wet the feather to the right of that one now and I'm doing the same thing there running the black along the pencil line for the wing feathers on the other side I use lamp black again and I leave some of the lighter underwash showing to separate them from one another. And here I'm painting on the dry paper. So you can see I've left a little bit of that lighter underwash showing between the feathers. I run some water along here and then some black along the edge. So I'm not actually giving these wing feathers another layer of paint. All I'm doing is using the lamp black to define them from one another. I allow the paint to bleed on the wet paper. Sometimes I paint on the dry paper just to vary it. I wet this one here with water. And then I run the black along the edge. So I use a larger brush to paint the water on and my little zero brush to paint the paint on. This is a number five that I'm using, the bigger brush. Along the back side of this wing feather here, I've just run some winds of violet on the dry paper. I want this bottom half of the crow here to be quite a bit darker so I'm wetting that body area with some water and here I've got the lamp black again so it's quite dark down there I push it up into the wet area and it gives me those soft edges I don't want to completely cover over that lovely underwash that I've got there. With the gate, I washed in the side of it with some Windsor Violet. It's not too dark. The paper's wet there. I also painted it on this side here on the dry paper this time. It's very pale as well.
When the violet was dry, I painted some burnt sienna onto the front of it. Before the burnt sienna dries, I drop in some watery violet. And then I get my little zero brush. I wipe it over the Windsor violet so that it's pure pigment and I drop that on there while it's wet. And I did the same thing all over it. In this little curved over section here, I've got some burnt sienna. And then I mixed some French ultramarine into burnt sienna to make a dark brown. And that's what I'm painting on there in the shadow. I'll get my other brush now and I'll soften that edge. So to limit my palette, instead of getting another brown out, I could have used some sepia or something here. I made do with the colours that I've already been using and I mix them together to make this new colour. It helps to keep everything unified. I use that brown here as well. So it's burnt sienna with a touch of French ultramarine mixed into it. I wet the paper first and then I put the Windsor Violet on there as well. This is the brown again. Using my small brush to get into that little tight spot. Then I wet this area here with some water. I use the brown mixture there. That's in shadow. And then I get a bit of the violet before it dries and drop that in. And I layer over the top of edges that need to be a bit darker with some more burnt sienna just on the dry paper. That's a bit of violet up the top there. Because this painting was for Halloween, I decided to add a cobweb on the gate. So I drew in some pencil lines. I used my zero brush and some gray that I mixed from French ultramarine and burnt sienna. And I painted that on the dry paper. I painted in the feet, I extended the cobweb and then I wet this side of the gate and I painted on some more burnt sienna to make it look like it was rusty. And to finish off I got a bit of white gouache and I ran it down the centre of some of the feathers just on the dry paper. And then when I was happy with it, I took the washi tape off and I took it off my board. And there it is, ready for Halloween. The gate took longer to paint than the crow because it was fiddly and it's got straight edges and curved edges. So I was glad to get that finished. I'm calling it a gate because I don't know what else to call it. I hope there was some useful information in there for you. If you celebrate, I hope that you have a really happy Halloween. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week. And my voice will be better next week, 100%. Voice, hair, hair. bronchitis. Yeah. With this painting, <clears throat> only recently starting using, uh, starting using, starting using, but it's smoother than cold, cold press.